Back into the deeps. Rattling Ned down the hatch, baby. Nice little fish right there. Welcome back to the channel everybody. We're gonna do some finesse fishing today. I know, I know I said it. This isn't quite my forte, but I'm telling you what, after some bad cold fronts leading into fall, they should be eating up, first of all. Uh, but after freezing nights, especially here in Texas, it gets a little funky. Uh, fish tend to pull out. They go to a little bit deeper water, the next deepest spot from where they were hanging out. And a bait that I don't throw very much a Ned Rig, in particular our Rattling Ned. Yeah, I know, it's a Guggen bait. It's got a rattle in it, actually. I don't throw the little worms very much. You know me, I created the Mondo Worm because I like throwing big stuff, big worms. I like throwing jigs and worms. Sometimes you gotta downsize, and with the water being dirty right now, this is a finesse presentation that also has a rattle in it that's gonna attract more fish in this dirtier water, so. We got ourselves a little point right here. Let's make some casts. Let's try to get a few more in the boat. We got a lot of wind out here today, so it's making it difficult to throw really light baits. But I've already tried some, some moving baits and it just doesn't seem to be the deal. So, and I've just got one of the um, heavy metal tungsten shroom heads on here. I'll leave a link down below for this little, little combo. Um, but people catch fish with this all over the country. I'm just, I'm not a little finesse fisherman, but one thing I really like about it is you can chunk it a mile. I'm, I'm throwing a little, uh, I believe it's a, a quarter on here. It's tungsten, so it's a little bit smaller. Uh, but there's no wind resistance. You know, like throwing a, a bigger worm or creature bait or something like that. You just fling it. With that little tungsten head, you're good to go. Oh, I got another one on. Another one on, just like that. Oh my gosh. He was on it like white on rice. I barely moved it. Man, light, light, light bite. I'm surprised I did not feel that with using braid, actually. Little spotted bass. Normally you always feel those guys. Voracious. Yeah, you know a spotted bass will love these things. Look how much they're choking it. It's crazy. Just a little guy, a little spotted bass. You can see the, the scales kind of are a little different. They got a little bit different pattern. They usually have some darker lines down here. Their jaw doesn't go past the eye when it's closed. So I'm fishing this in about 10 to 15 feet of water. So I caught my biggest smallmouth on this lure this year and it was in really heavy current. It was in deep, deep water and it was hard. It was really hard to feel the bite. So right now as I'm fishing this in a little bit shallower water, it's nice. I can feel the bottom and I'm, I'm just kind of shaking it along as I'm hitting a good little patch of rocks. I'm not in real thick rocks, but uh, it's kind of a mix of like soft bottom and hard bottom. So when I hit that hard bottom and I can tell it's hard from using the tungsten head and um, using braid, I'm using our Guggen Squad uh, braided line. You can really feel everything that's down there with it. So when I get to a little patch of rockiness, I'm just giving it a shake. I'm gonna do a little pass on this bank with a lipless crankbait. And just see if these fish are gonna get fired up. I just caught two in a row on the rattle of Ned. And uh, I don't know, I came through here with the moving bait before and they weren't going and the, the wind is kind of dying down. I mean, this is, this is the thing to do right here when it's windy. Just take you a, a moving bait, spinner bait or lipless or crankbait, kind of come through here. And I'm fishing over these fish right now. So they might just be 
locked on the bottom. It's just called hunting and pecking right here. Hunt and peck. Might have to go back to the rattling nid. Oh, there's a bite. I did feel a bite right there. As soon as I paused it. I can actually see some fish just right off to my left on the side imaging in the zone I'm throwing in. So it's probably just the spades going too fast. They're not super aggressive right now. The water's dropped dramatically. So I'm just gonna pick up that rattling net again and see if I can pick a few more up in this spot. That should be money. Got him. Ooh, right up there on those rocks. There we go. It was a little steeper. It was right in the zone where I marked those other fish. Uh, come here. Are you spotted bass? Oh, you're a nice spotted bass. Yes, sir. That is a delicious spotted bass for out here. Woo! Nice one. Okay, I'm gonna hook that guy. Let you go. See ya. Man, spotted bass. Just so aggressive, but I, I honestly could not even feel that bite it's really windy these fish are just kind of lethargic right now picked up on my rod and i just felt like a, a softness and that's normally when you just need to you just need to go ahead and check what's going on there give it a little check that's a rock that is not softness it's very much hardness yep and so here she goes if you're wondering about the rigging it is the simplest thing ever you just thread it on. There's a little uh, keeper on there. And you just leave the, the hook exposed just like this. So you don't really have to set the hook that much. That tiny little hook just goes boop, right up in their mouth. And I'm using a, um, a medium action rod because I'm using braid. There's no stretch. I don't have to use a medium heavy like, um, like if I was fishing a, a Texas rig or something like that. I really needed to draw, drive that hook up into the fish, you know, through the plastic and throwing fluorocarbon. That's when you need a medium heavy or a heavy action. With this, especially because it's light too, it's easier to throw on this tackle. I think where this bait really excels is around uh, lakes that don't have a whole lot of good cover in them. Now, it really excels in the Great Lakes where you're dealing with sand and uh, rock piles and shell piles, things like that. The lake I'm in today is just rocks. There's really no wood. There's absolutely no grass. This would not do well on a grassy lake. In a grassy lake, I would just throw uh, like a weedless uh, stick bait or something. But for some reason, they like this little nugget. There we go. I think we got a, might have a little better one here. Could possibly. Had a, had a good hard thump. A little bit better fish. A little bit better fish. Seeing some fish here on the graph in like 12. That's a large mouth. Uh, just choked. Look at that in the sun going down see you later in the sun sundown action Ooh, the water's starting to get cold oh man how did i not hook him that is a mystery I think that fish has got it. Oh, he's a little one. Gosh, you are tiny, sir. Tiny, tiny. 
a little too tiny. Oh, there's a bite. He's got it. Oh yeah, there we go. That was just a better thump. I could feel it. Oh yeah, we got a big swirl on this guy. Nice fish. Woo, baby. Good fish, barely hooked though. Barely hooked. Boat flip for the win, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, baby. Look at that. Bottom lip wasn't coming off. That is a nice fish right there. That's a good, that's about a three pound fish. Good fish for out here, really thick. And man, I mean, I came through here with a moving bait two times, two passes. Just couldn't get them to go. And they're eating this little finesse bait. I don't know if they need a jig or not, but I'm getting I'm getting bites on this. This kind of saved the day. Just coming out here for an evening bite and catching fish like that. Mm. On light tackle, I'll take that any day. Mega sniff. Oh, you betcha. All right, big guy. Let's let you go. Back into the deeps. Well, it was good to end the day on just a, a good old decent bass. Just sniff one in the evening before the sun goes down and the sun is going down so quick now, y'all. I mean, it is full blown general hunting season. It is time to get out there and I'm always torn between uh, going hunting and then going after a good fall fishing bite like I've had some of my highest number days uh, In the fall, it's just when fish tend to group up really well and you can catch a ton of them So it's hard to play that balance of yeah, do I want to go sit in a tree or do I want to go crush some fish? But I only had like an hour and a half this evening and I actually went out to try to get on some crappie and some white bass and go out deep spooning. I figured they would just all congregate out on uh, close to some creek channels and uh, it's kind of a weird transition time. Like there's, it was so cold, it was freezing. I thought they might start to move out to their winter haunts, but they haven't yet. There's just, things are kind of scattered and the bass, it seemed like they wanted to get up there and start feeding. But, you know, it was just so cold the last two days. We literally had freezing weather and they were just kind of down on the bottom just being still. I think that's why they weren't hitting on moving baits and things like that when I came through on a couple of passes. So throwing finesse rigs, I know I am I'm not a big finesse person, but uh, that is definitely the time to go do it. So if you have those post front conditions, it's a muddy technique. So the Ned rig and especially our rattling Ned is a really good technique, I think, for uh, dirtier water like we have here in Texas. Some people throw uh, net rigs like that is a primary thing. Clear water, not a lot of cover, that's a primary thing. But you know, down here in Texas, I don't think it's a primary thing. Not a lot of people throw it. We throw a ton of shaky heads. We throw a ton of finesse jigs. But throwing the rattling net is just a newer thing to me. So I'm, <laughs> I literally have three packs of them. That is... Uh, the entire uh, inventory that I have. But again, what makes it cool, I think, is that right there. It's got rattles in it. But again, if y'all want to pick some of those up, I'll leave a link down in the description for you to get the pair of the exact thing I was using with the tungsten mushroom head with the rattling Ned. And it is time for me to get out of here. Emmy is actually in bed right now asleep, so I gotta keep my voice down. Stay tuned to be out in the woods and on the water with me, and I will see you right here on the next one. Don't bring him in here until he's ready, man. Okay. You need right here? Jeremy, where do you want it? I don't care, I can get in this seat, man. What would that mean? Yeah, yeah, get down there low. Might have to belly flop him. Oh, I'm going to belly. I'm going to yeah. two hands. Woo! If he wasn't your best, we'd just grab him. And... Yeah. Oh, no, no, don't do it.